everybody. This is Dr. Novak, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. Sometimes we look at products like this <clears throat> kitty litter here, for example. This is just one of many uh, that you could buy. And uh, sometimes we look at products and we think they can do more than what they're cut out to do. And this doesn't just imply to like kitty litter, for example, it also implies to expensive products that you may use for your substrate for adding into canister filters, hang on the back filters. This is just one example of a product, the Eheim here, but there's lots of biological medias out there. And even this does not guarantee success. It also doesn't guarantee that you are not going to have a tank full of algae. What I'm bringing this up for is I went over to a particular person's house, a hobby's house, and they had their tank set up. I took about three and a half minutes of video, which I will show you. And after you look at the tank, it's a 55 gallon tank full of guppies. And they're breeding like crazy. So he gave me about at least 30 guppies or more out of his tank. And the only thing the tank had, what I could see wrong with it, is the water was a little greenish color, but that could be because the tank sitting out in a lanai and does get direct sunlight at times. He leaves the lights on, though, from 7 o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. Now, that's a very long time for a strip light to be on over the tank. That could be adding to his green water problems. However, he doesn't have algae covering his all his plants and his tank. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you a surprise that I found out. And you, I think you'll be very interested to see what the surprise is. So let's get into the video right now. Now the plants are grown in this. So the so the entire bottom is all kitty litter. Right. Then each pot. Where the plants are growing, those are full of kitty litter too. Kitty, uh, a layer of uh, potting soil. Okay. Uh, and then kitty litter, and then stones. Oh, okay. Just the stones are there to help it. Right, I see. You got the stones on top. Help it uh, right. lay them down when I first put them in. And how long has it been set up? Um, the plants went in in uh, March. March of this year. Yeah. And they, I take it, they weren't that big when you put no, them in. No. no, and that's all from March of yeah. this year. I've been some snails. Oh, I see. Looks like you have an assassin snail in I there. Do. I bought a couple of them to try to control the others. Oh, I got you. Yeah, they they will do that. And what do you have? A canister or uh, no, in the, the tank the filter? Only, yeah, this is the only filtration system I have on it. That's you, uh, oh, it's hard to see. Yeah, yeah. But anyhow, oh, I see. Like an in the tank filter. Oh, right. it's a like a bubble filter with a pump on it. Yeah. Oh, okay. And two, and two filters, and so. Right, two filter sponge, and that's it. That's it. Very simple. I put this on it. You get the afternoon sun that's wet. Okay. And so I put the blanket oh, for the back. back on the back just. To oh, the that would that would make sense. So, um, and how long do you leave the lights on for? I leave, they come on about seven o'clock in the morning and go off about ten o'clock at night. Oh, they're on for quite a while. Yeah. No, the re uh, reason I want to show this because it's a very simple tank. It's everything that I've been telling people on uh, my YouTube channel. Yeah. And this is so simply done, and you're not using any under gravel or anything. Basically, no. it's just a kitty litter as your gravel. Right. And then, of course, you have the pots, and the plants are growing like crazy. Yeah. And you're not using any seal, too, or anything. So. No, you're not doing anything. And, yeah. I got a, a heater in it that's... Right. Not, not activated right now, but it's, it's on. You can see it. Um, 
and then the pump that I just put in because I was getting them from the kitty litter when I first put it in. I would get cloudy water every once right. in a while. Right. Okay. And so I, I didn't like that. Fish didn't seem to care. I don't think. But yeah. I put that uh, filter in. I don't think it would have mattered one way or the other. But the, no, helps. that it, it normally it happens. You, you can clean it out some. Yeah. Out of a bag, but you'll lose a lot of right. the dust out of the bag. And uh, that's is that like that special kitty or something from Walmart stuff? It's just Walmart yeah. stuff. Oh, okay. That's basic. just that's just the Walmart basic kitty litter. Okay, now since we watched the very short video, <clears throat> I decided when I came home, the fish looked very healthy, no disease, no anything. But these are his tests that I did when I came home. Now I tested it, these tests with my field test kit, which of course is uh, my exact eye dip test kit. And it's a very easy test kit uh, to use. But I, th I think it's a little too expensive for the normal hobbyist myself, unless you're a dedicated hobbyist. But uh, to get like six tests and the reader and everything is, is pretty expensive for most hobbyists. But as you look, it says pH low. That's because the test itself only reads to 6.0. It will not go any lower. And therefore, his pH was lower than what the test kit will read. That's why it says low. And then, of course, as we look at it, we say we see phosphates, PO4. It says high, parts per million. Well, the test kit only goes to 2.5 parts per million. Anything above that, forget it. it. It won't test anything above that. And usually at anything above 2.5 parts per million, when it comes to phosphates, it's, you know, uh, it's a losing battle, really, trying to keep algae away because that's the limiting factor. And then as we see the nitrate test kit for freshwater, NO3, was 47 parts per million. But I did ask him about that, and he said he hadn't done a water change in over a month. So it's 47 parts per million of what he's doing. He did make the statement that he feeds them Tetra Flake food, and he feeds them three times a day. So we know that he's not starving them, only feeding them once every two or three days. He's feeding them every single day, he says, like three times a day. So that could under, be understood why the nitrate and phosphate readings could be so high. But on the other hand, when we look at those results, we also have to say, well, where's the algae? Now, I saw he had a an Anubius, and if you look closely, you'll see, and the Anubius has some algae growth on the leaves, which is not uncommon for Anubius leaves to be susceptible to algae growth. But as you notice that the veil he had in there didn't have any, and then his sword plant didn't have any. He had crypt in there. That didn't have any algae on the leaves. Only the Anubius had algae on the leaves. And I noticed that with a lot of people's tank, Anubius plants seem to attract algae on them. However, the green color of the water could be because of just floating algae cells that we know of. And uh, they could be because of the sunlight. He's getting direct sunlight. And because he has his lights on from 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock at night. So that's a very long thing. But if we look at his test results, and we look at what he's doing, and we look at all the uh, wrong, if you want to call it that, doing, having his lights on way too long and everything else, and, of course, he used potting soil in his containers for his plants, and as we see, his plants are growing like a banshee, yet he still keeps algae at bay that most people have a lot of problems with. So it's funny that he's doing what a lot of people would say he's doing a lot wrong, and yet 
he is not coming up with a bunch of algae problems. Now, some people would say, well, it's the plants using up the nutrients. Uh, no, 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 no. We know that's not right because we know for a fact his nitrates at 47 parts per million and his phosphates being, well, higher than 2.5 parts per million means no, 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 no. His plants are not using up nitrates and his plants are not using up phosphates and he does not use CO2. So that theory that the plants are using up the nutrients, ee, false, wrong, completely wrong. They're not using up his nutrients. In fact, if he's right and he hadn't done a water change in over a month, we can see that the nitrates are just increasing along with the phosphates. So what is it really that's keeping the tank from getting all kinds of algae in it? It'd be interested in the comments. I would be interested to see in the comments what you think why. Because we know for a fact the plants are not using the nutrients up. The nutrients are going skyrocket, and yet he doesn't seem to have an algae problem like so many people claim that, uh, oh, I made a plenum and it doesn't work, and I tried to slow it down, try to speed it up. I tried, I tried everything, and I got algae all over my tank. Well, what about this guy? Yeah, I know he's got maybe 100 or more guppies in his tank. He said he just recently, a few days ago, got rid of about 30 or 40 guppies that were in the tank. So he had a lot bigger load of those guppies than uh, what I'm showing in the video. So it really makes you wonder if he's feeding three times a day, which most people will not feed that many times a day because of the food. And he feeds them, and all he feeds them is flake, tetra, flake food. That's it. Which we know is full of nitrogen and phosphates and stuff. He's feeding tetra flake. So it's interesting. Why is he not getting the algae? His light's on continuously. He has a, a four-foot strip light. I don't know what manufacturer. He has it on. I asked him if he adjusted his light, like take away the blue or anything. No. No, he didn't do anything. He just plugged it in, and that was it, the light. So he's not adjusting the color spectrum. But like I said, he is getting that uh, full sunlight in his back. So that makes a big difference, the way his house is facing, to get some sunlight in the afternoon directly into the aquarium. But uh, the green water, that's just free floating algae. That could be taken care of if somebody wanted to to add a uh, uh, UV light. And if you probably had a UV light on the tank, that tank would be crystal clear. But I want to hear your comments. What do you think? What do you think is going on? Why does that tank uh, not have algae all over it? That tank should just be full of algae. It should be a sore, you know, it should be just an uh, eyesore. Basically, right? Just an eyesore. But it isn't. It's a very beautiful, nice looking aquarium for somebody that's doing so much wrong, as, as you may say, that uh, he gave me some of his veil and stuff like that. So, so what's really doing it? What's keeping the algae at bay? Now, the, the, the algae, like I said, is on the Anubius, but it's not on the recipe. But as you can see, he's got the kitty litter only very thinly on the bottom. I would say half inch or less. Then he's got big, what they call river pebbles. And I said, where'd you get them from? Oh, I just bought them at Lowe's. You know, so nothing he has is expensive in that aquarium. He bought the river pebble rocks. Uh, and nothing, I would say, is super. He has a extra power head in there to add movement. I don't know. What is your thoughts on it? Why do you think he doesn't have all kinds of algae problems? I'd be interested to see what people say. So that's it for this video. Some short video just to let you see. Most people would say, well, he's doing everything wrong. Why is he coming out so right? You tell me. So this is Dr. Novak. Until next time, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe 
and happy fish keeping.